Joshua Farnsworth and thanks for watching Wood and Shop. In this video I'm going to show you a historical method for tightening mortises and tenons together even without glue called draw boring. Draw boring uses wooden pegs or pins like this uh, pushed through the mortise. There's a hole dr drilled through the mortise and uh, then an, a separate hole is drilled through the tenon, but it's offset a little bit so that when a pin is driven through, the pin actually has to go out of its way slightly to go through the hole of the tenon, and so it sucks it up really tight. So I've got this, I've got this part of our desk, the apron here and the leg, all ready to go. Uh, and I've drawn a little diagram on here so you can see how these pegs go in. Since we have a bigger, uh, since we have a bigger, a bigger apron here, I'm going to be using four of these pegs, and I'll show you a little bit later how to make them. But you can see how I've got them spaced out here: two go in there, and two go in through that side. And you can see how they're offset a little bit from each other so that they don't get in each other's way. So the two main things to be concerned about when you're doing this is the vertical spacing and the lateral spacing. So the, the, as far as vertical spacing goes, you want to make sure that you're not so high that you are too close to the edge of the tenon. So you can see here, I've drawn the lines of where the tenon goes in, here and here, and I've taken it all the way around. And you want to come in enough so that you're not going to be splintering out the edge of there when you drill. So um, the other, and I'll show you in just a second how to do that. The other consideration to be aware of is the lateral spacing. And that um, is making sure that you're going in not too far but that way and not too far that way because there's a mortise back there. So let me pull this apart and show you. So if you were to go too far that way, you'd be coming through the mortise there. And if you were to go too far that way, over here, you'd be, you'd be exiting the whole joint. Uh, so you've got to, what I like to do is just find a middle ground or a, a middle spot somewhere in there and mark it on this other side. And that's what that line is. Okay, so let's start doing this draw boring technique on a different leg and apron there, and we'll see how this is accomplished. You can see I have these pins laid out to show you how it's, it's going to be spaced out. Uh, we're, I'm using a quarter inch bit here. On bigger pieces you could probably use a bigger one, um, but uh, you, you kind of get the idea here how you've got to make sure that they don't hit each other when they go through at their biggest part, which is going to be a quarter inch. It may be a bigger right here, uh, but it's not going to go in that far. Uh, so what I do is I, I first start off, as I mentioned before, I took this. Uh, I took this. You can take a marking gauge or your combination square like this and get it about somewhere in the center there. And bring that over here and mark. Kind of a. You can. Whoop. You can slide it along here and mark. And that'll give you your lateral measurement. And you can come do it on this side as well. OK. So now what I like to do is you remember how I said that I don't, I want to make sure that I don't get too close to the edge of this tenon or it'll blow out that edge. So I like to give it about a, 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 bits, a bits worth of space there. So I'll set it up against this line here, which references my tenon, and just give it a little bit there, and the same here to make sure that I don't hit the tenon down there. So that's, our, that's my limit. And then I like to set this on here and mark there. So, there's my, so my first hole is going to be like that, and my second hole is going to be like around there okay and you don't have to do this every time but maybe the for the first few times just so you can get used to it is draw these lines around 
to help you space the other the other ones out. Okay, so this is going to be number one and you can just draw a little lighter over here and then number two around the bottom one we'll bring that around here again okay so now you can see this will help you space out the other ones so the next one we want to come through we'll set we'll set it right down here okay mark that so that's going to be our well actually give it a little extra space because we've got some room to work with in here and you can just play with this but i'm going to give it now you can eyeball it to see about how much space you need to give it. So I'll say maybe about there and there. And you could even just lay these all out on one side if you want, like this, there and there. And then decide which goes in which one. So I'm going to say that one goes there. All right, draw this around. And this will really help you to know, have a little reference where everything's going to be hitting. Okay. I know it can get a little confusing, but hopefully this will clarify it for you a little bit. Make sure I got that right. So this is not it. I'll darken these, these parts out. Spaces. Okay, so that's going to be right there. Okay. So you can see here now how none of these are going to hit each other. So I'll, so I'll take uh, my hold fast. I'll put a little spacer under here. And take my hold fast here to hold this down to the workbench. And then I'm just going to stick my auger bit in there. If you want, you can prick the hole with a compass or with an awl or something, whatever you've got close by, I'll give you a little start. And you can back it, go in reverse a little bit if you want, and then start. And the reason I have a piece of wood down below is so that we don't have an exit wound when it comes through. You can see that it punched through the middle, the mortise in there. And that doesn't matter if it's messy because you won't be able to see that. Just keep going. Until it punches through. I think I'm probably through. You can put a little piece of tape on there to let you know when you're through to the right depth if you want. I think this ratchet mechanism on mine is a little bit messed up right now. All right, so you can see, hopefully we're through. Yeah, gave a pretty nice clean hole on that side. So I'll go ahead and drill all of these holes and then I'll show you the next step that involves the tenon. Okay, so you can see the holes that are offset from each other. So grab a uh, chisel and clean this out just slightly because there's some little frayed pieces that came off when you when the auger bit punched through. All right. Here we go, so make sure that I'm lining up the right Roman numerals again. That's upside down, but it's six. There we go, okay. So now, this is the fun part. Make sure that you've got 
I, I like to stick a little something under here to keep the tenon up. So I've got it snug up, uh, tight, and then I want to take this same auger bit that I punched through and I want to push it through. And that will give me the exact center point. Now be careful that you don't use an awl or something else. Use the same auger bit that you use because it's going to put the holes exactly centered right there. Okay, now this, if you can see it, would be the center of these holes. But like I said, we want to come in maybe about a sixteenth or less and drill a new hole. Okay, and that is going to give us our draw boring power, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, we'll get this. We'll get this right. There we go. So watch really carefully. I'm not sticking it in that hole. I'm sticking it back towards the shoulder. And in the past, I've accidentally gone the other way. And that not only is wrong, but it actually pushes your joint further apart. So be careful that you go towards the shoulder. And then drill down through with your auger. And I don't like to punch all the way through. Or I guess it doesn't really matter. But if you want it to be a little nicer, you can just, once it starts coming through the other edge, you can stop when the lead screw comes through and flip it around. Oh well, this is kind of thin. So there you go, we've got... Yeah, see how ugly that is, but it is all hidden, so it doesn't matter too much. So now, let's see, six and six, yep. So now we're gonna stick it in there. It's probably gonna be hard to see, but there's a little offset in there. So that when one of these comes through, it's going to tighten it in snug. And it's already starting to do that. Now the next step is you can either spend a lot of money for some draw boring pins, which they may work better, uh, but I actually really like to use these, some trammel points. You can see they're really, uh, they're really nice and smooth. And what you're doing is you're kind of greasing the tracks there. You're making it a little easier for this, these pins to be able to go through that little offset. And I usually like to stick it, let's see, let's lift it up off here so it can come through. If you can, hope you can still see. But I'm just gonna stick this in here kind of burnish the hole and make it a little smoother to come through. And in the next video, since this video is already a little too long, I'm going to show you how I make these little quarter inch pins or pegs to go through there. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you'll find free video tutorials, buying guides, workshop tours, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to receive my regular blog posts and YouTube videos, and don't forget to check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!